In this video, I'm going to show you how I turn this £30 charity shop table into a convertible, concealable board gaming table. Now, I'm not a carpenter and I'm certainly not a woodworking expert, but this project took me about three hours and maybe about £20 of materials. And the best thing is, at the end of the gaming session, you can put the lid back on and make it into a standard table for the rest of the week until your next game night. Now, this is a work in progress, so do subscribe so that you can see the latest updates and see how this project develops. Now this is what the underside of the table looks like and the chances are it will look very much like one in your house. The tabletop itself is actually held on by a number of wood screws that are just put in at a diagonal to sort of hold it down and in the corners are some brackets to hold the legs on. Now taking the tabletop off is just as simple as using a power screwdriver or a drill to take these diagonal screws out. Once you've got all those out and it might take a little bit to find them but some of them are hidden away, you can just pop this side assembly off and remove the tabletop. So with those screws out, the tabletop comes off and this is going to allow me to batten round using maybe some 2 by one timbers, whatever I've got lurking around upstairs to, um, to the side of the frame. And I'm just going to use some little self-tapping wood screws, much similar to the ones that held down the tabletop in the first place. So these are the battens, it's 19 by 38 mil kiln dried sawn timber. Probably a good idea to get kiln dried so it doesn't warp and split when you get it in the house. But I've cut it using a cross cut saw, you can just as easily use um, a tenon saw or any other kind of woodworking saw. And you don't have to be that accurate, I just measured them roughly to the size. So this little piece of MDF is going to form the gaming surface and this is going to sit below the level of the table top to create a little cavity here. It's only 9mm MDF and it is a little bit wobbly but I'm hoping that the, uh, the battening around it is going to really firm it up. Now the reason why I've used 9mm MDF is just basically because I'm a, a cheapskate. Wix, the local um, UK DIY superstore, has these sheets in its stores and they use them as a packing material to separate layers of laminate flooring. So they actually sell these and give the money to charity. So I've got this entire sheet for three whole English pounds. What's that, about five US dollars. So I've basically gone with a cheap option with the idea that I can uh, beef it up if, if required. So while I was all set up in the garden, I got the MDF sheet cut to size, and it's a good idea to do it outside anyway, because the MDF dust is really quite nasty. You should really wear um, a dust mask if at all possible. So I just used a panel saw just to cut along the length. You can see how windy it was on the day. Now, as you saw before, across the corners are some braces that hold the legs in place with these uh, side elements here. So I'm just gonna make a little measurement across, and it looks like about 100 mil. Uh, actually a bit less. Let's have a look. After having a bit of a think, the whole table seems to be imperial, feet and inches. So I re-measured this, instead of being 80 mil, being three inches, um, 45 degree that I'm gonna cut off um, to create that relief for the corners. Okay, with the corners cut out, it just sits on top of those wing nuts in the corner. It's actually gonna sit much lower down to create a greater depth so I can leave board game components out. So with the battens that I pre-cut before, I'm just drilling three pilot holes. I'm drilling one either end, and I've just normally chosen one inch from the end, and I'm gonna drill one in the middle, one at the other end. That's just gonna allow the, um, the wood screws to locate, and I'll be able to clamp it up. So hopefully, I shouldn't have to do any complicated measuring. It's all just gonna be done by eye, which makes this a really quick project. So with the battens cut to length, I've um, pre-drilled a clearance hole in three positions on the side. I guess I should really pilot this, but I'm just, I've got some self-drilling self-tappers. So they're just gonna go straight in there and I've used a quick clamp, um, just clamp that up to hold it all in place. So let's get this first batten secured. So here we have the first fix of the the sub table, as I'm going to call it. Uh, it's only 9mm MDF for the reasons I discussed before, just because it's super cheap, but it's actually remarkably stable and it's not even screwed down yet. And just to show you, that's the Too Many Bones undertow box, which uh, just about fits under the, uh, under the tabletop. So the next bit is the exciting bit. I'm going to put the, uh, the headliner felt and um, the gaming felt on and see how that goes. Okay, so not only am I not a carpenter, I'm not an upholsterer. So we're going to see how this goes. I've had a bit of a research, I've found the products I think I need. So this is some contact spray. 
in my first video where I made a little laptop gaming tray up here, I used some 3M um, contact adhesive spray. It wasn't great to be honest. So this is uh, the heavy duty brother, uh, Nemesis contact spray adhesive. Uh, critically, non-staining as well, so it should be fabric safe. Get a bit of tension, I think will require a staple gun. And in these two packages are the, um, the fabrics of choice. So, package one is what they call headline fabric. Now this is the, um, the fabric that goes on the, the ceiling of a car, as it were. So let's have a look inside. Got relatively clean hands. Hmm. So that in itself is almost a nice gaming surface. See if I can just zoom in a touch. It's got a little bit of sponge to it and that's what gives the, um, the soft dice roll you get on nice casino style tables. Now I sort of struggled a little bit with the, the, the topper of choice. I went with a black felt. Um, I think speed cloth might have been my preferred um, style, but I just couldn't find it in um, in just a plain material. They've all had the playing card suits that were embroidered into it, which I didn't want for my table. So I've gone for a, a standard black felt, and the thickness of this, along with the headliner felt, should give a really nice sort of premium feel. Um, I tried just felt on its own on the lap gaming tray. It was fine. Uh, it's certainly a lot nicer than just playing on a table, but I don't think it's gonna give that premium quality feel that a pair of these fabrics will give. And if you do this project, don't do what I did. Actually sweep down your surface before you start cutting fabric, because I got sawdust everywhere. It came off, but it was a bit of an unnecessary pain. So the next bit is going to be potentially a little bit tricky. This is actually um, sort of like an expanded foam on this side. So if you stretch it too much, then it's going to put tension and make it feel really thin and potentially a bit cheap. So I'm going to put contact adhesive on the board, lay it over, hopefully do it straight, flip it over and then just tension it a little bit and hopefully um, put some staples in. So. <laughs> Wish me luck. And as it turned out, that Nemesis spray glue was better than I could ever imagine. It's quite a weird texture. It sort of comes out like the Spider-Man webs. It's really stringy and just sets almost immediately on touching, but still gives a little bit of rework. It's just fantastic stuff. So the next bit I sort of made a bit of a meal of, cutting the corners and folding it in shouldn't be this difficult, but I certainly made it this difficult. What I should have done in retrospect is cut it across the diagonal and folded it in. But I staple gunned it and it's just worked out fine. Okay, despite an absolute horror show on these uh, corner sections, it actually looks and feels pretty good. It's got that, I don't know if I can capture this, that nice soft feel there, which is what I was looking for. And it actually looks pretty neat, to be quite honest with you. It does almost raise the question, is it worth covering it in felt? Well, you know, after all that, I've got the felt out and it sort of has this weird sheen to it. You know, I'm not convinced by that at all. Do let me know in the comments what you think, but it sort of looks like a bin bag, you know. And maybe just go with this. It looks cool and it feels great does feel a little thinner though, that's the only downside. I suppose I could do a, a double layer in future. Well, I'm going to get it assembled and uh, yeah, roll a few dice, see what it looks like. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty happy with that. For how much I've spent on this, which is next to nothing, that is a really cool surface. I'm going to set the camera up, roll some dice and so you can get a feel for what the the components look and sound like on the board. Fantastic. Obviously there's more to be done on this project. I need to find a secure way of attaching and reattaching the, the tabletop. 
I was going to um, put some gas struts on so I can have the, the table fold in the back because I mostly play solo and co-op games. So um, just having three side access is going to be perfectly fine. But I think in the initial case, well, maybe what I'm going to have to do is put some little door locks on the underside to hold the, the tabletop in place so it doesn't slide around when not in use. Alternatively, I could create some dowels, but that's going to be a little harder. Um, obviously, there's finishing to be done. Down here, there's gaps where I've cut a generous clearance, but it's my intention to uh, board out the sides, maybe have some thicker battens covered in the same material um, with maybe a, a bit of a clever mitre block in the corners to, to hide that detail. But that is the gaming table. I'll leave you with some shots of um, some components, also the tabletop on and off. And if you like this project, do subscribe, because I'm doing a lot more on this. I'm going to be um, obviously putting the finishing touches and then having a bit of review and seeing how I could have done things better. And I think I'm probably going to make another one, because this table is only a charity shop find. And I think you could probably make an entire gaming table for around £50, table included. So until then, do like, subscribe and comment, and I'll leave you with some uh, component shots. Thanks for watching. Thank you.